Hi, it's Ian from ChessTape.com, and the 2012 South African Open is now over, with Zimbabwe's Rodwo Mokoto being the winner on tiebreak. Going into the final round, there was Grandmaster Ahmed Adli from Egypt, playing fellow Grandmaster Tala Bajal on board one. Abajal had 8.5 out of 10, uh, leading the field with a whole host of players further back on 8, so everyone was hoping that Adli would win to give the others a chance and when he did with the black pieces, making up in some way for a rather disappointing tournament to finish on 9 out of 11. International master Johannes Mabusela and Daniel Cordery also joined Adelie on 9 out of 11, but Makoto was the winner on tiebreak after earning his points the hard way, including two creditable draws against the grandmasters Fernandez and Tull. Fernandez, who was on 7 out of 7 leading at one point, had bit of an implosion at the end there to finish up on 8 out of 11. So here's the game, Makoto against Shabir Babudin, which Makoto won to clinch the title. Began with a d4, knight f6, c4 and g6. And I'm going to play through the opening quite quickly. It's a king's Indian with lots of theory behind it. Castling e5, h3, queen comes up to b6. All well-trodden theory. It's a lion that has quite a high win percentage for white, although there's a lot, a lot of theory, so it's not by any means a bad lion for black. There's a lot of current theory has been played. And this was a game now from 1999, Alexander Golden versus John Langrek. And that game continued with c4, which handed some of the initiative to, to white. Uh, here, the black, the black knight isn't on a very good square, though, the knight on c7. And you could swing it across to e8 and then to g7. And you'll see later in this game that the knight would have been really useful in the defense if it had been placed on on g7. But here in the game, black continues with the perfectly natural bishop to, to d7. And now here for white, a4 is an idea, with even bringing the rook out onto a3 then. Uh, but white continues with the aggressive queen to g4. It potentially invites a, a c4 push now. Um, Black must be cautious against the threat of the queen coming across into the h file. And now, with no knight to defend on the king side, black. It's a tricky position for black. So black decides to bring the rook over to e8, and white marches in the h pawn. h4. Black trying to align the rooks to defend. And h5. Now, this is an instructive position. Pause the video and see if you can find a good way for black to defend. It's a very tricky position. Here, g takes h5, holds things together. Because after the queen takes, bishop comes down to e8, and black is still looking quite solid. However, in this game, black played rook to g7, and now white has all the initiative with taking the g-pawn, which takes g6, rook to h1, and black is struggling. So white will take some time now to move the light squared bishop and then the king out of the way, but then the attack seems quite overwhelming, so black must respond quickly. His light squared bishop is trapped, defending a6, the knight on c7 isn't well placed, and black's pieces aren't aligned particularly well. The only bit of counterplay is that b2 square with the bishop and the queen both honing in on it. So what to do with the queen? Um, queen a6 is a possibility, coming into c4 to a4. But black here tries to activate the queen with a c4. Now it's not an easy position for white to press. 
queen h3 or queen h4 are fine here, but black's always got the threat of that b2 pawn. And black can also play at some point bishop to e3, which exchanges the dark squared bishops, and then forcing the a rook across to b1 to defend the pawn, and then if the black bishop takes, the h rook must even come across. So it's not easy for white to to get everything going in time. Of course, black isn't isn't going to try and do something silly like hang on to the pawn. So white continues here with bishop to f1. Here, yeah, knight e8 or rook f5 both look natural. Although knight e3 is also also worth uh, analyzing. Um, getting the bishop off the defense of b2, and then there's all sorts of interesting play coming from that. Although black plays the solid knight e8, king moves across to g2, and the rook in to f5 to give the king some escape at the back. Now the black pawn on c4 can be quite a thorn with possible c3s. On some lines it's, it's worth taking quite soon, for example queen to a4, king escapes to f8, bishop simply takes the pawn on c4. Still has a very strong attack, although here white played rook to h6, bringing the rook in first. And now we've got to see that the, the white king and the queen are under threat of being forked on e3 with the knight. So the bishop on c1 is no longer defending the pawn. So black takes the pawn, bishop takes b2. It's interesting though that queen takes b2 I think was even better because now the bishop is forced to take back and then uh, the knight jumps to e3 and forking the queen. Here in the game white simply ignores the take and brings the queen across to h4, threatening mate straight away on uh, on h8. So, of course, the king comes across to f8. Rook forces it to e7. We bring the rook to b1, which is defending now the well. It's pinning the the, the bishop to the queen actually. and c3. Pause the video for a while here and see if you can find a continuation for white. This is quite a tricky one to find, so take a bit of time if you want. White went ahead and played knight to f3, but he missed a stronger line, knight to d6. If you didn't find knight to d6 earlier, take a second now and see why knight to d6 is so strong. The, the knight can't simply be taken straight away with knight takes knight because there's a forced mate in 3. Very neat. Pawn takes check, king takes it, knight check. King has to go back and we get checkmate. So white didn't see the knight to d5 and instead played knight to f3, which is the discovered check. So here, black is really hanging on, looking all over anyway, plays to g5, we get the knight taking the pawn back, knight comes to e3, hoping for some sort of action, bishop simply takes it, Queen takes it, knight to h7, really hammering it in here, and now after knight to g7, there's much simpler to find than the other line, a mate in two. Pause for a second and see if you can find the mate. It's simply g6. King must take, queen plays to h5. Here you see that 
according to the PGN notation I have white actually missed the mate and played h7 uh, but still king escapes to f7 and seem to resign at this point so well played by Rodwell Makoto the 2012 South African Open champion thanks for watching catch more videos on chesstape.com